Welcome to the latest episode of Ships Tips. Now you join me on this episode at a fantastic fishery called Manor Farm Leisure near Evesham. These lakes are stuffed with F1s, but they're also stuffed with skimmers. And we've had a couple of frosts now. It's, a, it's probably like three or four degrees this morning. The water temperature has gone down. This is when expanders can be absolutely deadly. Now I'm going to get back on my box, I'm going to run you through the bait, it's not just expanders I'm using today, I'm also going to incorporate a little bit of ground bait, because I want them aiming to catch skimmers and F1s. So let's get on my box and I'll run you through everything that I've set up for today. Well, the bait tray couldn't get a lot more simpler, to be honest. I've got me a bit of ground bait that I've mixed up. I've mixed a bag of pro thatchers. And what I've done with that, in a kilo, because the, the pro thatchers come in a kilo, ground, uh, a kilo bag, I've put three quarters of a pint of water in. I've mixed that, and when you mix it, and you start mixing it right, it goes like a big soggy mess. That's how you want to do it. Leave that then for like 20 minutes to half an hour, so do that when you get to your peg, set your gear up. By the time you've done that, you can then go back and put it through a riddle. Now I've used a three mil riddle. I've put it through twice because it makes, I mean, it's absolutely, the thing is with all the pro ground baits, it goes through a finer milling process. So they're a lot finer than your normal ground baits. And what I find is put that amount of water with it, leave it, put it through a nice three mil riddle, do it twice and it's absolutely perfect. It just melts away like that, it's lovely. Now, the other two baits that I've got for today, I've done myself some pro expanders, normal way of doing it, in a jar overnight, and all I've got there is some four mil and six mil. Really simple, brought them to the bank today, tipped them out of the bottle, straight in, and keep them in a bit of water. So I get asked a lot of that, you know, what do you do with your pro expanders, Des? Keep them in a little bit of water like that. It just keeps them absolutely perfect all day. But one of the most important things, I mean, these are new this year. They're Pro Expander 2 mils. It's incredible, to be honest, how these have come out. I mean, you can see from there, there you can hook these. I'm actually going to feed them in ground bait. They are unbelievable. I've done quite a few. I've probably done like half a bag in there because I want to feed these in my ground bait. I might not have to put them on the hook, but you can just imagine what we're fishing for today, which are skimmers and F1s with cold water, they're gonna be absolutely deadly. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm gonna feed and how many of different ground baits and pellets I'm gonna put in at the start. Well, I'm all ready to go now. I've got me feed baits here, me ground bait and me micros. I'm now gonna do the mix that I'm actually gonna feed at the start of the session. Now, like I do on all ships tips, try and use little pots like this. So you can vary if you go to different venues or you go fishing one week and you think, oh, I put a little bit too much ground bait in or I put a few too, uh, few too many pellets in. Use little measurements. I think it's, you know, it definitely helps in the long run. Now, what I'm doing today, I'm actually gonna put that's a 250 ml pot. I'm gonna mix up a mix of three pots of ground bait. So I've got a separate container there. So three 250 ml pots of ground bait. And like I said, you can vary this to what venues you're going to. And I'm gonna put one pot of the two mil pro feeds in. So there's quite a few pellets. You know, if you're going to somewhere and it's gonna be, you think it's gonna be really tough, you might have to cancel the ground bait out a little bit or you might have to cancel the two mils up. That's something that you've got to, you know, sort of use your fishing brain if you like. But I want to be a little bit of positive today. As I said, we've only had a couple of frosts. It's not absolutely freezing at the moment. And I think the fish are still going to want some bait. So I'm going to tip that in a pot. Give that a good mix around. And all that ground bait now is going to stick to the two mils. Or them two mil pro expanders. 
like that. Give that a good, a good mix of rain. And then you can make a ball like that. Look at that. Not, you know, you don't have to squeeze too hard. So you can see all the, the two pro expanders in the ball. I think that's going to be absolutely deadly. And what I'm actually going to do, I've set up two rigs for today. I've set up to fish 11 metres at the bottom of the shelf. And I've also set up away from the bank a little bit to my right in four foot of water. Because it is, you know, it has been cold. I think the fish are going to move out. And on some of these venues, probably like Manor today, them big skimmers do come down the edges, even in the, when it's cold. So I'm going to give myself them two options. And I'm going to put two balls in long and one ball in short. Oh, I've got another nice skimmer on now. It's taken about... I, hooked, I actually hooked a carp, and it does happen like that sometimes. I put them two balls... Look at that, that's a lovely skimmer, that. Got a few of these like that. Got one lovely bream, probably three pine. But these are the fish that I'm after. These sort of 10, 14 ounce fish. When these come in your peg, it's absolutely brilliant. Before I go back out, I'll just run you for me rig, because it's really positive. When you're coming to these commercial lakes like Manor Farm with lots of skimmers in, you'd be amazed how positive you can be, especially when you're fishing with expanders. Start off with the elastic. I'm using one of the elastics that I've started using recently, an eight original slip, but really important. If you use that lubricant on it, it's absolutely brilliant. I and mean, I'm using that today rather than a six because there is a lot of carp in this venue. There's a lot of F1s. And I'm open, you know, to catch the quality skimmers. So eight original slip. I've got 013 reflow power line, main line, and I've got one of the new F1 fine floats, 4B16. It's actually got a 1.2 hollow bristle. And when you start fishing for these skimmers during the winter with, with expander pellets, try and get a finer bristle float. It definitely helps, you know, sort of see the bites. Getting down to the shot in, really, really simple. I've got a small bulk of number eight shot, and then I've got two number nine droppers. So big droppers, it's gonna get your bait down, but most importantly, it's gonna, you're gonna better see the bite. Now, one thing I do a lot for skimmers and F1s with expander fishing is a real short hook length. I've got a three inch hook length there of 011 reflow power. And I've got a 16 SFL hook. So barbless hooks, obviously, that's the venue rule. Um, but that's the most important thing. I've literally got probably four inches from the hook to the first number nine dropper. Really, really positive. And believe you me, when you're trying to catch these little skimmers like that, if you fish a long hook length, sometimes you'll miss the bites. You won't even see the bites. So... Have some short hook lengths done. You know, I've literally just using a pre-tied hook length and I'm cutting them down from four, uh, six inches to four, uh, three inches. So there you go, really nice and positive. Just going to run through. Been fishing about an hour and 20 minutes now. Fishing a four mil expander. Just hook it through the barrel like that. And I've just started feeding some little balls. So it's the same mix as what I started with because I didn't use all of it. And I'm just making a little ball like that. Use like your three fingers. It's probably carrying five or six of those two mil pro expanders like that. Got me a little cab pot and then shipping that out. Just take your time shipping it out. Make sure you don't bounce your pole. And I'm literally dropping them little balls in after sort of every five fish, not every chuck because the fish are absolutely freezing. So just tap that in and then dropping me bulk right over that and literally following it down. And as the float, or as the bait gets near the bottom, just hold your float out a little bit and then you can drop that right where that little ball's gone in. The wind's a bit awkward at the moment. It's sort of blown round. I've got a nice short line between my elastic and me float which i think is really important when you're fishing like this it's nice fishing you know it's winter fishing it's not absolutely solid it's not rigid 
there we go tiny little bite then literally like a little flick and i always say to people you know be aware of that these bites off of these fish these skimmers everybody thinks you know they're easy to catch they're not when the water's cold these are the ones we want these are weight builders so that eight that eight slips perfect never probably getting on for 14 ounces look at that really crafty fish show look at them like brand new manor farm it is best missed a tiny little indication then i'm trying not to strike too hard where i can actually strike the expander off so i've got plenty of hooks showing if i had to go down and fish those two mil expanders on the hook i'd probably fish like an 18 or a 20 but I'd try and stay with a 16 with a four mil expander on so i've caught three fish off that little ball well, I'm trying to make a little ball on this venue. It's probably, where I'm fishing, it's probably seven foot deep. So it's quite deep, really. I and mean, if you were going on the venue, which was a lot shallower, like three, there we go. A tiny little bite then. Do fight well on here, to be fair. Beautiful fishing. So I'm going to get this one out and put another little ball in. And then going back to what I was going to say, if you go to a venue which is shallower, you know, instead of making a ball, if it was really tough, you know, try just putting it in the pot loose. You know, got a few of those two mil expanders mixed in with your ground bait. Look at that, they're like peas in a pod. Fantastic fishing. Freezing cold. They're really crafty some days. Really crafty fish to catch. But when they start, you know, when they start feeding like after day, probably it's taken an hour and a half to get these fish going. So a little ball like that, you know, you can squeeze it as hard as you want. I'm giving that like three or four squeezes. So it's going to get down to the bottom and then break up. Put it in your little cad pot. If you're not great at shipping in and out with a, with a pot on, just use a bigger pot. But I am trying to make a, a little ball, so it, it definitely keeps them down. If it was really tough, if I was really struggling to catch, then I'd experiment of putting sort of a softer, a softer ground bait in with a few of them two mils in. But I don't want to do that because I think it's just going to bring them off the bottom. I'll end up getting loads of indications, loads of liners and, and foul looking fish, which is obviously I want to try and avoid. So four fish, little ball again. And then obviously I'm sat here now thinking, right, I'll put that little ball in how long does it take me to get a bite is it immediately you know if it, if it goes a bit slower that might say well you know go a bit more careful on how you're topping up but with any sort of match fishing or pleasure fishing you've got to experiment just lift and drop again then only only a float length oh something like i thought i was just gonna have a go at that then It's amazing some days you can get a real positive bite off these skimmers and other days they give you that tiny little indication it's going to lift and drop again i always treat it like if you were fishing a little ground bait feeder you know every time you cast out you're putting a little tiny bit of bait in and sometimes when you go feeder fishing if you don't cast out often enough you just don't catch as many fish and that's the way to treat this you know sometimes if you don't feed very very often you don't catch as many fish and other days you know that comes with experience other days you put like two balls of ground bait in oh that's a tiny little bite there had the pellet off that one some days you can put two balls of ground bait in and catch on it all day it's definitely not the day for that it's definitely a day where i've had to put them two big balls in it to start and within an hour, I'm topping up.
So just flick that out. The bulk goes exactly where I put those where I'm feeding. Just lift the float out a little. Let everything go dead straight and then lower in. I love this style of fishing. I think it's brilliant. It's what I call frustratingly good. It's frustrating but brilliant at the same time. And I know if this wind went completely, I know I'd be hooking more bites because I could, you know, try and hold me pole tip right over me float. It's awkward to do that because I've got a bit of a side wind. And unfortunately, the toe is slightly skimming to the, to the same way as the wind. But it does drop now and again and it gets back up. There we go. That was a proper bite that time. Had to have a strike at that. And I said, some days, you, every single bite's like that, and other days, you get these little silly bites, and they can be the biggest fish. Not quite as big either, that one. Six ounces. So I'm going to go back out. Don't look six ounces, that, but believe me, that'll be six ounces. Give it four mil. Straight out without feeding. Oh, that wind's just dropped lovely now. And I know if it was like that, your presentation would be so much better. Well, there you go, it's a better skimmer. I must admit, I've had an absolute fantastic day here at Manor Farm Leisure, near Evesham. And it's just got better and better as the session's gone on, really. But I'm gonna, unfortunately, it's time for me to go home. And what a fantastic skimmer to finish the session off. Absolutely brilliant. Let's get him back. I said, obviously, like I said earlier, it's better to feed little balls. And I suppose as the day has gone on, it's got a little bit stronger. I felt like I'm a bit more confident to feed a little bit more. Little balls, not even bother with that sideline, that edge line, to be honest. As I've sort of, it just felt I needed to concentrate on one line. And you'll find that with expander fishing during the winter months. You don't want to be sort of messing about too much, especially with these skimmers, because you need to be feeding it and you need to be fishing it. So there you go. I hope you, I hope you picked up some great tips on this episode. Um, if you want to know more about preparation on the Pro Expanders, click on the link below. See you next time. Thanks for watching.